Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to another episode of Pwned. Got another blaster to showcase to you guys today, and it is none other than the Orion Blasters Lynx, and I got it right here. This, you guys, might, might actually be the reason why I want to invest in half-length darts, or like half-length dart mags, like talent mags or whatever, because this this blaster here is super sick. And this one is actually loaned to me by Snowy. So once again, Snowy, thank you. He was gracious enough to loan me this as well as the Spring Thunder that you guys saw in the previous video. So thank you, Snowy. Uh, and also thanks for poisoning me, bro. Like really, this is, this is one of, <laughs> this is, this is really cool. This is really, really cool. Now you guys saw that this was actually in gray. And why is it now in this awesome teal color? Which is the reason why I'm wearing this shirt, by the way, and the reason why I'm wearing this paracord wristband. That's because Snowy wasn't happy with the quality of his prints for the previous version. So we actually met up again about a week after hanging out at Tim's place, and he had all of this fresh off the printer bit, and he made the swap. He disassembled the whole thing and reassembled it all in this brand spanking new color in under 20 minutes. Guys, that's quite crazy. So yeah, by that description alone, this tells you that the Lynx is actually a 3D printed blaster. But what's unique about this is that it is a bow pup where the mag actually goes in here and it's got a kind of like a U-channel system right here. So the darts get loaded in here. There's some kind of magic going on here and then darts will be fired out. And all of that is possible because there is something that I would consider a floating plunger head. So as you prime the pump back, you'll see the spring being compressed from here to where the plunger head is right now. And with that action, it also actuates this part of the breech where it opens up so a dart would move up one slot. And as you return the pump grip to the forward position, this will close and chamber a dart, but then it will pull the entire plunger head back with the spring compressed in it, it just moves, which is quite cool. Let me just show you guys, right? I'll, I'll try and do it with my right hand because yeah, you can see it this way. Watch the way the spring compresses and then the whole plunger head will just move. Okay, check it out. It's really quite cool. See that? Then and now the whole plunger head will move. And mind you, because of the way it's set up, this thing's actually featuring a slam fire as well. That's really cool. So, yes, you guys, you can actually dry fire this blaster. How cool is that? You can actually dry fire this thing? Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay, so anyway, let's talk about this thing. It's really sleek. It's possibly one of the thinnest blasters that I've handled so far. So the grip here actually isn't all that comfortable, but I have to say that it's very, very thin. One of the sleekest pistol grips I've ever handled so far. I mean, it fills my hand, that's fine, but I'm used to, I guess, something a bit thicker, something a bit more girthy, for lack of a better word. So a bit more chonky and more hefty in hand would be a bit more comfortable. I've actually tried to put one of those Glock style silicone grips in here and it was just too much slack on that because this thing is just so narrow. I mean, it's a feature. I've seen pictures of other Lynx blasters with injection molded pistol grips and I don't know how that's possible or if that is actually an older version. I'm not so sure, but I've seen that before. And the grip here is interchangeable. You could change it to any kind of grip that you want. You could change it to a vertical grip. This actually belongs to Snowy. He's put an angle grip here which is actually quite comfortable you could handle it in a few ways i don't know what this grip is it's like a shankle grip or something like that i could hold it like that like, like this way this way or i could hold it this way with my thumb around it which is quite cool so either way it's very comfortable i, I like this i like this uh snowy i hope that you'll tell me where to get this because i think this is cool i want it on almost all of my other blasters that actually feature picatinny rails for the front grip attachment so let me know please or if any of you know or have a lead to where i can get this please put it in the comments below because i'm interested in it up top we got four picatinny rails it's got a couple of sling points one on either side at the front and one on either side on the back of the blaster near the butt plate or the shoulder stock whatever this is called right but there are two slots here i don't know what these slots are for but I did tie a little charm here for Snowy just because I thought it was cute. Now the mag well here is also very well done. We've got a lever here that, I mean, you're not supposed to be holding it this way, right? Let me just, let me just get a mag. So this blaster takes talent mags, it goes in like that. You don't even have to prime the blaster to insert or remove the mag, which is also another really cool feature. But you guys saw what I did in the opposite direction. It feels kind of intuitive to use your thumb because we're used to I guess removing mags this way with other blasters. But for this particular blaster, you could just use your index finger like that, like another trigger and just depress it and pull your mag out. You could do it with your other hand, your non-firing hand. 
So there's so many cool features about the blaster, right? Like stand fire, the ability to dry fire, being able to insert and remove your mags without actually priming the blaster. And the next thing I want to mention about Snowy's build is that he actually has a scar barrel right here. We could actually remove it. Then you actually see the length of the barrel itself and it stops right there. I'm not so sure why he did that. I think it's his whole setup. His spring here isn't the strongest spring in the world. Like it's quite, it's quite easy to actuate the spring, but I think he's just compensated that with a shorter barrel. And I believe that he's going for accuracy above everything else. So he's got actually a scar barrel. And the reason why the scar barrel is exceptionally long is because the scar is only up to here. The rest of it is just a loose barrel. So you could easily guide it out of the blaster, right? And it sits right there, snug, perfectly done. I think this actually looks quite cool. There is one more thing I want to mention, and this is by no fault of mine. <laughs> there is a missing screw right here. Snowy's aware of this. He said that he lost a screw, so it's not my fault. Just so you guys know, don't blame me. It's not my fault. But this thing functions completely fine without just that one screw, right? The other side has all screws in place. There are also a couple of takedown pins, one at the front here that you kind of just push out or hammer out. I'm not going to do that right now. And one at the back here, just in front of the but plate. I must say that by removing this, it gives you access to the magwell area. So if the spring on your magwell here goes out of place, you want to remove this takedown pin first, then you can access this whole magwell area, then fill with the spring until it sits in place and then just install everything back. It's really quite a no-brainer. Now the next thing I want to say is that the seal on this is not 100%. It's not the best seal, but it works for Snowy. I didn't do anything to it. I didn't try and improve it or anything because this is his blaster. It is his build. If he likes it this way, I'm going to respect that. But this is actually hitting about, I think, 180 to 200 FPS. Don't quote me on that. Like I said again, this is Snowy's blaster, but it is pretty darn accurate. And without going too much into detail about the performance of this thing, because there's so many options in terms of customizing or tuning this thing. Man, I hate using the word tune. Tweak and adjust this blaster till you are satisfied with it. Yeah, I want to say that more. I, I don't know why people use the word tune. I, I mean, tune your blaster. I, I guess I guess it makes sense. Maybe I'll just try and learn to embrace that word. Tune it, fine tune your blaster, I, I guess, yeah. Since now I have the mag in here already, I have six darts in there. I mean, I'll just show you guys, right? So six darts. I've got three soft silicone tip darts and I've got three hard tip Darts and those hard tip darts are actually called the boomer darts. Uh, maybe I'll just do two single shots and then I'll do four slam fire just to prove to you guys that this thing works. If you have the blaster in the prime position, pulling the trigger will not do anything. So you don't have to worry about this thing slamming because it is a slam fire thing, right? So yeah, just wanted to let you guys know there is no way for you to deep prime the blaster, but you can dry fire it. So yeah, first single shot, here we go. Second single shot. And now we're gonna go for slam fire. I'm just gonna pull the trigger down and then just pump this thing. If I do it in this angle, hope that you guys can see that my finger doesn't let up. So here we go, four shots. Let's just do it and try it out. All four out, absolutely no problem. Oh, why am I doing that? I didn't have to prime it to take out the mag, but okay, since I did that, yes, you could still insert and remove a mag even if the blaster is primed, see? So now do this and dry fire the thing and this blaster is still completely fine. I love it. I think it's a really awesome blaster. So shout outs to Dan aka Orion Blasters for this. Now at this juncture I want to say that Orion Blasters has also another blaster design called the Taurus and that is a full-sized Magwell bullpup blaster and that thing is just magic. I really hope that I could get my hands on a Taurus one day. It's like the barrel and the plunger tube is in line but it's a bullpup system so I don't even know how that works. Like, that to me is just pure sorcery and I'm really interested in seeing how that actually pans out. But that I think is very, very hard to get a hold of. It is rather elusive. I don't think anyone in Singapore owns it. So yeah, I mean, a man can dream, right? So I was dream about that. But in the meantime, I got to say that I really like this blaster. I think it's really cool. Super compact bullpup style. 3D printed blaster that accepts half length darts and half length mags, I should say. That is also one of the downsides that this thing only accepts half length mags. And uh, by that, I think that this only accepts talons. Now I have here a long shot without the stock. So I'm just gonna compare this to the long shot and I'll put it side by side like that. And you guys can see just how small this thing is for a 3D printed blaster. Yep, it is a bullpup, but look at that. Basically you don't need such a long barrel sticking out like what you have on a long shot or maybe even a caliburn or any non bullpup blaster. But for this, this is the barrel length itself. This is the whole size of the blaster. It is super comfortable, super shoulderable. 
Like I said, it's very narrow as well in terms of this way. It's very narrow. A minor downside is that this grip here is also very, very narrow. But see, it's super compact. See? Really shoulderable, really compact. And if you guys are wondering if I'm talking about accepting full length mags, why can't this be extended to accept full length mags? I've actually asked Dan himself, and it was only after handling the blaster that I could really understand this width. The fact that it's so sleek and so compact is also another measurement that you have to take into factor when you're talking about full size mags, because full size mags are actually wider in terms of thickness versus a Talon mag. So that was something that I didn't think about until I handled this thing. So it's not going to be a simple conversion of just extending this part. So just for fun, the reason why I chose pink for this particular charm is because Snowy was trying to go for a Cyberpunk 2077 kind of look where there's some teal, some pink, a bit of black. Let me just swap out some furniture and then show to you guys what I'm trying to say because I think that a picture paints a thousand words. You guys ready? Well, bam this is what it looks like. So I actually had these two attachments lying around and I was not using them so I decided you know it would look really good on this blaster and I put it on and I was like well it's undeniable this thing looks really really cool so this is actually a gift from me to Snowy because he's been more than just an awesome nerfer he's been an awesome friend as well he's helped me out many many times and I guess this is kind of like my way of saying thanks not just for loaning the blasters to me but just being a great human being in general. So thank you Snowy and I hope that you enjoy these two attachments here. Uh, these are both from GNG Armaments in case you guys are wondering and you're interested in getting one of these for yourself. This is a detachable carrying handle that goes onto any Picatinny size rail and this is of course a vertical grip but the cool thing about it is that it is screw in from the bottom so you tighten it by the bottom and I've had them for a little while just that I never used them because in the past I actually had quite a few pink themed blasters but this soft pink goes very well with this particular charm that I tied and I think that it ties the whole look of this blaster together in terms of the color palette. Of course, it also ties in with the shirt that I'm wearing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I did this on purpose, guys. Come on. This is it right now. This is Snowy's Lynx. And you guys know my verdict. I really like the blaster. I think it's a really well done design. Once again, kudos to Dan of Orion Blasters for designing this. And uh, I don't know if there's ever going to be a V2 or whatever in the future, but if there is, well, power to you, my friend. I'm um, looking forward to that. And I really honestly think that I'm going to pull the trigger and get a Lynx for myself. <laughs> yeah, I've not felt such a want for a blaster in a long, long time. Yeah. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed the content. It was really fun making this video. Like I mentioned again, this is more like a showcase, not so much of a review. But I think that this blaster is a really, really cool blaster. Super small, super compact, and just awesome overall. I'm a sucker for bullpup designs. The downside is that it takes Talon mags only, or half-length mags only, and it's got a pretty narrow pistol grip. Although it is a full-size grip, it's just a bit narrow. Not forgetting, of course, the way it functions. We've got slam fire, the ability to dry fire, and you could insert and remove mags without having to prime the blaster first. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next episode whenever that will be or whatever that will be about. Drills pay the bills and teamwork makes the dream work. Peace.